All right, guys. So as we all know, Hurricane Ian was an absolute tragedy. Um, it's done hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage um, already. Uh, and that's the estimates that they've come up with. It's definitely going to be probably 20, 30, 40 billion dollars worth of damage by the time everything gets parsed out. It's going to take years to rebuild. Um, and overall, there's going to be a lot of crooks. Um, there's going to be a lot of fraud. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that have the problems that were caused by the hurricane compounded by insurance companies not paying or contractors making bad decisions and taking advantage of homeowners. And so I wanted to make this video to give homeowners in Florida five simple um, tips uh, to help them throughout the whole insurance process and the uh, rebuilding process as far as roofing companies go. So here we have a short little video um, just to kind of illustrate the amount of damage that's been done down in Florida. Uh, where the death toll continues to rise from Hurricane Ian. It is now up to 129 people, and many people who survived are struggling to clean up after catastrophic damage. Officials say more than $207 million in claims have already been paid out by insurance companies. $207 million have already been paid out, and we're talking about a matter of weeks. Um, so, like I said, by the time this thing get, gets to a year, um, it'll be a couple of billion dollars, um, if not tens of billions of dollars. Statewide, the damage is estimated at more than a hundred billion with a B dollars. But as Manuel Bohorquez reports, it appears much. Yeah, see, there you go. A hundred billion dollars. Um, I said 20, 30, 40 billion. Um, but they're saying here a hundred billion. And anytime there's an estimate for the most part, it's going to be a low estimate. So, um, you know, this was, like I said, an absolute catastrophe of that cost may not be covered. As residents return to Hurricane Ian's ground zero, cleaning up is only the start of what will be a years long recovery effort. Jesus. A few days after the storm hit, we met Robbie Podgarski in Fort Myers. He had lost mostly everything. Well, that's our house. His home, his business, all destroyed from flooding. We, uh... So the first tip um, that I would give you guys um, as far as filing your insurance claim, because obviously this is why you have insurance for situations like this, um, acts of God. Um, so the first tip is you need to know your insurance policy. Um, it's probably not something you were thinking about on the front end, maybe you were. Uh, you were probably just trying to get your family out and get everything boarded up um, to try to minimize damage, but you need to know um, when's the last time you had your property appraised and how much coverage do you have? Um, you know, values of everything have gone up in the last few years. And so you might have, you know, on accident, not upped your policy coverage, and you might not even be fully covered, even if they cover at the top of your policy range. So you need to know how much you're covered for. Um, you need to know what type of policy you have, RCV, replacement cost value, or ACV, um, actual cash value, meaning that they're not gonna pay the depreciation on the claim. Um, and then you also need to know your deductible. So especially in Florida, um, you know, you've been seeing a lot of uh, policies get kicked down to ACV after a certain amount of time. And so there's probably a lot of people that think that they had an RCV policy, meaning that they're going to get the depreciation paid and then just to file a claim and find out that they actually have an ACV policy because when the policy updated, um, you know, they probably sent a letter. But let's be honest, who reads the 45 pages that your insurance company sends you? Never in our wildest dreams could we have thought this was an outcome that was possible. We checked back in with Podgarski yesterday to see how things were going. So for insurance, we already talked to our agents and they basically said nothing's covered unless I can prove. So that point is very good and it goes to our second tip um, and that's to make sure that you get an extremely thorough assessment. Um, when you get to your property um, or when anyone else gets to your property, they should take pictures of literally everything. Um, in a regular insurance, like if you get hit by hail, um, you're talking maybe 100 pictures. Um, I would recommend probably closer to 500, 600, 700 pictures. Um, every single nook and cranny, every single um, piece of furniture, because you're going to be covered for everything that was inside the dwelling also. This isn't just going to be an exterior thing since there's all types of flooding, wind damage that's blowing windows out, um, and all that kind of stuff. Not to mention that um, if you clean everything up before 
you get the pictures. Uh, it gives insurance companies an out. Um, I remember hearing stories about Katrina uh, where, um, you know, the wind wiped stuff completely off, you know, the slab. Um, and then they said, well, you're not covered because it's flood insurance. But if you had taken pictures there, you might have been able to see trees blown over, um, all that kind of stuff. So you definitely want to make sure that you're, you yourself or somebody on your behalf is doing an extremely thorough documentation of what's going on. Prove to them that wind destroyed it before water touched it. There's nothing that I could yeah, do. Yeah, see, exactly. Bogarski doesn't have federal flood insurance. In fact, only about 18% of Florida households do. And homeowners insurance stopped covering flooding in the 1960s. Despite living in a zone where federal flood insurance is recommended, Podgarski told us it was too expensive. Since we're in a historic building in technically a FEMA flood zone, our insurance would be more than our, our mortgage or our rent. That point is really good. I mean, that's just, it's unfortunate. And it goes back to our, to our second point, which is to make sure that you document everything, because if you were hit by flood and wind, um, but you're only covered for wind and hail, uh, storm damage, that kind of stuff, they might deny you because they say that you, um, actually were it's caused by a flood and therefore, uh, we don't cover you. That kind of leads us to our third point, which is you want to make sure that the contractor, the public adjuster, the uh, lawyer, whatever you're working with to make to adjudicate your claim is licensed in the state of Florida. And the reason why is for stuff just like this. They're going to know the local municipality codes. They're going to know the local laws. They're most of the time going to be plugged into the, the local officials and people that can help you. Um, in a storm like this, there's going to be a lot of transplants that come in. And it's not saying necessarily that all transplants are bad, but there is going to be a, a portion of people that come in from out of town that don't have your best interests at heart. The people that are from there, the people that are from Florida, the people that have been through this before and understand, they're definitely gonna have more of your interests at heart, in my opinion, than somebody from outside. Um, and then this also leads us to our fourth uh, point, which is you want to make sure that you keep every single piece of correspondence that you have with anyone contractor, adjuster, um, in engineer. I mean, you're going to be dealing with a lot of engineers at this point because you have extreme structural damage. Um, every email, every text message, every document that is, uh, sent to you. Um, anytime you speak on the phone with them, you want to summarize what they said to you in an email and send it to them. And you want to keep this in documentation just in case you have to go to litigation, which unfortunately you don't want to go to litigation. That's probably the last thing that you want to do, but having all of those documents will help you. Um, if you are denied, if your claim is denied and, it, and if your um, claim is legitimate and it's not being paid, you're going to need all of that stuff uh, to help you out. And the fifth and final thing, um, as you can see from the video that we showed you, um, like I said, it's just complete devastation down there. Um, and if it was my home, I know that it would feel like my wife had been ripped up and, and um, kind of thrown into a blender. But you cannot let your um, situation, you cannot let your emotions get the best of you. You can't think, I need to get this done right now, right now, right now. Because when people are desperate, they make bad decisions. And when people are desperate, they're easy um, for predators to take advantage of. And so my advice to you would be to make sure that you move with haste, but that you also are evaluating your situation at every single step. Make sure the contractor is licensed. Make sure that the public adjuster um, is working on your behalf. Make sure if you have to get a lawyer that he's not so overwhelmed with claims that he's not going to actually be able to give you um, the type of care, um, the type of attention that you need. So um, I hope everyone that was impacted by these storms um, can can have their life put back together in a timely manner. Um, it's like I said, it's going to be a crazy uh, couple of years for contractors and everyone that's working down there. Um, so I figured I could just give a little bit of advice to homeowners and people that are involved uh, to help them get through, you know, this trying situation. So uh, if you guys learned something in this video, uh, consider giving us a subscription. Um, and if you like this type of content, you can head on over to our Facebook, to our LinkedIn, to our TikTok. Um, we post a lot of other content there. So hope you guys have a great day.